Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Robinson again, and we're going to continue our studies. This time we are graphing absolute value functions. A V-shaped graph that points upwards or downwards is the graph of the absolute value equation. For example, here's the parent function, f of x equal absolute value of x. Notice it's pointing upward. Here's our graph. It's the shape of the letter V always, and it's pointing upward, so that means it's positively pointed. So f of x is equal to absolute value of x. When it's pointing downwards, our parent function is equal to negative absolute value of x, because that, that is making the absolute value whenever, once it comes out, it's going to be turned to its opposite, negative. So that means this is going to be pointing downwards now. So the vertex or turning point is the union of two rays with a common endpoint. The vertex is the lowest or minimum if the graph is upwards. So let's take a look at this chart. Let's go full screen. So we have our chart here. It's a V, it's pointing upwards. That's our parental function. And the minimum point or lowest point right down here is the origin zero, zero. That's the common uh, endpoint of the two rays. And if you look at our chart here for f of x equals the absolute value of x, if x is equal to negative 6, the absolute value, if I stick it in there, of 6 would be positive 6. So f of x would be 6. As well as if I stick negative 4 inside the absolute value, I would get positive 4. If I stick negative 2 in there, I get positive 2. If I put 0, the absolute value of 0 is 0. Absolute value of 2 is 2. Absolute value of 4 is 4. Absolute value of 6 is 6. So notice the y coordinates 4, 6, 4, 2, 0, 2, 4, 6. It starts up again. It goes down, counts down by 2s, and then gets to 0, then counts up by 2s. So that's what they mean by this is turning. It's going back up or turning up uh, back to. Uh, where it started from. So that's the turning point. And again, this is the bottom point of the graph, 0, 0, which is our minimum. The turn, vertex of turning point, where the union of two rays with the common endpoint, the vertex at its highest point, that's the maximum if the graph is open downwards. So here, the maximum would be the origin up here, and it's upside down. If you remember, we said the f of x is equal to the negative absolute value of x. So that means if we put negative 6 in there for x, so the absolute value of negative 6 would be positive 6, but then we have to put an, attach a negative sign to it, and that would make it negative 6. If we put in x equal to abs negative 4, the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. Then outside of that, we'd have to make that a negative 4. If we put in negative 2 inside of that, that would make that a positive 2. And then we have to attach a negative 2 for that. Absolute value of 0 is 0. If we put a 2 in, 2 in place of the absolute value of 2 would be positive 2. Then we attach a negative to that. That would make it negative 2. If we put in 4, the absolute value of 4 is 4, but then we attach a negative sign to it, that would make that negative 4. And 6, the absolute value of 6 is positive 6, but then we attach a, a negative sign to that, which would make that the absolute va the negative 6 for this f of x. So once we graph this, notice again, negative 6 counting upwards to 0, then counting down to negative 6. So that's what it looks like when you graph that. It's upside down with a maximum peak point. The general form f of x equals a times absolute value of h minus a, x minus h plus k. That's the general form you should know for uh, this equation. And there are a few things we should know about the transformation of absolute value functions. A reflection about the x-axis 
if x is less than, if a is less than 0, the coefficient is negative. So we're talking about negative numbers for the coefficient, the number outside here, the a. And the graph is open downwards like we showed in our previous example a second ago. So here, f of x, the parent function, if we have a function here, g of x, if it has a negative in front of the absolute value, it's going to be opening downwards. A uh, you're going to have a maximum as a result. So the vertex remains the same, but now it's a maximum. So let's look at some other things we need to know about these transformations. Again, there's our general formula. Vertical stretching, if the a, the number outside, times the absolute value is greater than 1. So that means your coefficient is going to be greater than 1. It's going to be positive, a positive integer. It's going to make your graph steeper or narrower than the parent function. As here we have a case where g of x is equal to 2 times the absolute value of x. So 2 is greater than 1. So we're talking about a positive number. And the slopes are going to be, by the way, 2 and negative 2. So um, here's our parent function, the black graph here, where we have f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. And this time we have 2 times the absolute value of x. So if we graph that, notice it makes it narrower, a lot smaller. The, the absolute value makes it, makes it narrower when the coefficient is a whole number greater than 1. So keep that in mind. That's one thing that you should know. Very important. As well as when you have a number for vertical shrinkage for a between 0 and 1. So we're talking about a decimal or a fraction coefficient. And if it's between 0 and 1, the graph is going to grow wider or as well as less steep. The parent function in the case of here, g of x is half of absolute value of x. So here we have the multiplying by the absolute value by a half. It's going to make it much wider. So here is, and the slopes are 1 half and negative 1 half. And if you notice the half there, there's a slope. And the parent function is the black one, f of x equals absolute value of x, so there it is. So g of x is one half of x, so it makes it a lot wider. So the slope is one half up one, two boxes over, and we end up there, as opposed to the slope being one, in this case, up one and one over here. So if uh, you look at that chart, you can see where I got the slope from. So this is now being made wider because of this fraction. So it's stretching out the, the line, but the slope is becoming less steep. It's not as high as it used to be. So it was high here, but now it's a lot less, less, less steeper. All right, next thing is vertical translation. So here we're going vertical means up and down. So f of x equals x plus k. So we are now dealing with the k, where k shifts the parent function graph up, which is positive, or down, which is negative. And that does occur in quite a few of other functions as well. So that's good to know. So for example, g of x is 1 half, so it's a wide function. So, so it's a wide uh, slope so so absolute value of x plus 4 so it's going up four spaces from where it was here's our parent function f of x in black absolute value plus k so it's going up four so it's going to go up four and again it's a wide opening not much narrower than before because of the fraction of the coefficient so it's going to be up here. So the k value just moved it up by 4. So that's g of x. Whereas h of x, here again you have again a 1 half slope and now you have a negative 2. 
So that means it's going down two boxes. So the blue one indicates that it goes down two boxes. So notice how the vertex changed. It's like the y-intercept. So it went down two. So that's a way you could think about it. Another thing you should know is the horizontal translation. So it's shifting now. So here again is our general formula. And this time we're now adding an h, whereas here we have minus h. But here this function is going to be plus h. So, so the k we know goes up and down. Now we have an h, and it should be minus h is the formula. And in this example, we have absolute value of h, x plus h plus k. So h is going to shift the parent function left for positive or right for negative. So that seems to be interesting, whereas you would normally go right with the positive numbers and left with the negative numbers. It's just the opposite in this case. So here we have g of x, which is our, our function up here. It's going uh, 4 up. So it went up 4 from here. So 1, 2, 3, 4 right here, and it's positive 3. So normally you would think it would go 3 to the right, but positives go to the left and acts in the opposite manner. So it ends up right here on this spot right here. So notice the vertex has changed now. So the vertex is over there. So the parent function, again, is down here. F, F, F of x, absolute value, h plus x plus k. So we want to now take a look at h of x, which is, again, wide opening, 1 half, x minus 5. So we're going minus 5, and we're going down 2. So we're going to go down 2, 1, 2. And I know you would think you would go 5 over to the left, but remember, it goes in the opposite direction. So we go 5 over to the right and end up right here. And there is your h of x, which is 1 half x minus 5 minus 2. So 2 down and minus 5 means 2 to the right. So again, notice how the vertex changes. So you've got to memorize the way these lines are moving. So here's one for you to try. True or false, the graph below represents the function f of x. Absolute value of x minus 5 plus 1. Now the easy part, remember, plus 1 indicates change from going up or down. So plus means it goes up. That's good to know. Now, minus 5, I know you'd be tempted to go over to here, but that's not true. you got to go on to this side. So it'd be over here at this spot right here. And let me get a pen. And I'll show you, you would, again, you would go up 1 and over 5 to here. So it would be at this spot right here but it's over there, so that would make this absolutely positively false. So that is not the correct graph. So please memorize your rules. Here's one for you to try. See if it's true or false. Remember which does what. So follow along. Check your understanding. If you understand what's going on so far, you're in good shape. But if you don't, rewatch the video, write down your questions, bring them in. I'll be glad to answer them. Here's another one. Which function matches the graph below? So we have a graph. See which function is matching that. See if you can interpret it. Now, I notice it I started the origin. It went down one. So going down one, so I notice it. I know it cannot be A. So it's either got to be B, C, or D. And it went to the left one. So remember which one goes to the left. The positives go to the left. So I would think that it was D. Now let's see. Is that right? Yes, it is. So there is the, your choice answer, D. So here's one for you. It's a little writing assignment that I prepared for you. So nice question I saw in the Regents. Describe the effect that each transformation below has on the function f of x, this is the parent function, where a is greater than 0. So you have g of x, 
absolute value of x minus a and h of x where absolute value of x minus a so so you got a little writing to do so i hope you enjoyed it and we met our objective so i hope this was an easy lesson for you please remember catch us on youtube my name my channel name is dan robinson P watch our latest release pkms math prep 17 check it out it's good movie i think you will enjoy it so i hope you got something out of it this is dr robinson signing off bye